Welcome to part three of Kinetics Review. This review material will focus on deducing a second order rate law given concentration time data. Before we begin, it is worth mentioning that the student should have first viewed parts one and two of this review to gain more from this and subsequent sections. In this introductory video for second order kinetics, we will again examine reactions with only one reactant. Otherwise, pseudo order techniques need to be introduced and they will not be discussed here. A rate implies a ratio. The ratio for a chemical reaction is either a loss of reactant per time or the formation of a product per time. The loss of reactant per time can be equated to the second order rate law, where n equals 2. The change of A over the change of T is the average rate of reaction, but we want to examine the instantaneous rate of reaction, so we introduce dA over dt. Now we have a differential equation we can solve with a little calculus and produce a function, which will be the concentration as a function of time. Before integration, we group similar terms. Introduce our integral, which is from initial concentration to concentration at some time t and time from zero to some time t. Pull our constant out of the integral, and after integration, we get an integrated second order rate law, which upon rearrangement yields a very useful form of the integrated rate law. Looking closer at equation six, we see it as a linear equation where a plot of time on the x-axis versus one over the concentration of A on the y-axis will give a straight line. So let's examine time concentration data for the decomposition of NO2. If we take the reciprocal of the concentrations and plot one over the concentrations versus time, we should generate a straight line if the reaction follows second order kinetics. So, how would we see this data in a word problem? In this example problem, we are asked to prove if this reaction follows first or second order kinetics, and what is the rate constant. In the previous video, we learned that if a reaction follows first order kinetics, then it should give a straight line plot employing the integrated first order rate law, where a plot of the natural log of NO2 concentrations versus time will be a straight line. So let's create a new column for natural log of NO2 concentrations and plot it against time. Clearly this is not a straight line. Alternatively, we could examine the slope of the first two and last two data points and see if they are equal. Calculating slope one followed by calculating slope two, we see that the slopes are not equal to each other. And again, we have proven this reaction does not follow first order kinetics. Now we should check to see if the reaction follows second order kinetics, where a plot of 1 over NO2 concentrations versus time will be a straight line. To do this, we create another column of data, 1 over NO2 concentration, and plot it against time. Clearly this is a straight line. Alternatively, we could have examined the slope of the first two and last two data points and see if they are equal. Calculating the slope of this line gives the rate constant, which is accomplished using the first and last data points to yield 0.773 liters per mole seconds, or simply 0.773 1 over molarity 1 over seconds. Another type of question a student could be asked concerns half-lives of second-order reactions. For example, here we are asked to again ascertain if the reaction follows first or second order kinetics, calculate the rate constant, and determine the half-life given the time concentration data for A. In the previous video, we learned that if a reaction follows first order kinetics, then it should give a straight line plot employing the integrated first order rate law, where a plot of the natural log of A concentrations versus time will be a straight line. So let's create a new column for natural log of A concentrations and plot it against time. Clearly this is not a straight line. Alternatively, we could examine the slope of the first two and last two data points to see if they are equal, which they are not. Thus, this is not a straight line and this reaction does not follow first order kinetics. Now we should check to see if this reaction follows second order kinetics, 
where a plot of 1 over a concentrations versus time will be a straight line. To do this, we create another column of data, 1 over concentration of a, and plot it against time. With this plot, we do get a straight line. Alternatively, we could have examined the slopes for the data points at the beginning and end to see if they were equal. Calculating the slope of this line gives the rate constant k, which is accomplished using the first and last data point to yield 0 0.0125 liters per mole seconds. To calculate the half-life for second-order reaction, we start with the integrated second-order equation, then making some substitutions, T1 half for T, and understanding that the concentration of A at the half-life will be half the initial concentration of A yields equation 2, which can be simplified and rearranged to yield our half-life equation. Interestingly, the half-life equation has a dependency on concentration, and we will see its effect in a moment. Recall for first-order kinetics, the half-life has no concentration dependency. However, the inverse relationship for the second-order half-life means that each consecutive half-life will be twice the time when compared to the previous half-life. So let's explore this by calculating the first half-life by substituting the rate constant and initial concentration into our half-life equation. The result indicates that 160 minutes need to pass for the concentration to go from 0.5 molar to half that concentration, 0.25 molar. Plugging our new concentration of 0.25 molar into the half-life equation affords the second half-life of 320 minutes, which is twice the time of the first half-life. This result should make sense because there is less reactant A to react, so it should take twice as long if there is half as much of A present. The third half-life is twice the amount of time as the second half-life, and so on and so on. Another type of question that could be asked is, well, what will the concentration be at some time t? In this example, we already know the reaction is second order, and therefore will follow the second order linearized equation. And we have already demonstrated that the plot of 1 over the concentration of A versus time will produce a straight line with the slope equal to the rate constant. Thus, we can use this straight line to extrapolate out to 415 minutes to calculate the concentration of A. When we substitute the time and initial concentration of A, we see that we need the rate constant, which is the slope. Calculating the slope will require 1 over the concentration of A for the first and last data point. Plugging these values into the slope equation affords the rate constant. Now, substituting the rate constant into the integrated second order rate law will yield the concentration of A at 415 minutes. The power of a straight line function is clearly demonstrated within this problem. If the initial concentration and rate constant are known, the concentration of reactant can be calculated at any time t. Another common question is, how much time needs to pass for the reaction to be x percent complete? In this example, we already know the reaction is second order, and therefore will follow the second order linearized equation. And we have already demonstrated that the plot of 1 over the concentration of A versus time will produce a straight line with the slope equal to the rate constant. So, the key here is to recognize that if the reaction is x percent complete, then 100 minus x percent remains. For example, if the reaction is 86 percent complete, then 14 percent remains. Thus, 14 percent of the initial concentration is 0 0.07 molar. Using these values, we realize we need the rate constant, which is the slope. Again, calculating the slope will require 1 over the concentration of A for the first and last data points, and these values plugged into the slope equation affords the rate constant, which is substituted into the second order linearized equation to yield the time required for the reaction to be 86% complete. In summary, for second order reactions, we limited our discussion to only one reactant. We were able to derive with a little calculus a function, which is the concentration as a function of time, 
or the integrated rate law shown here that is a straight line. We also derived the half-life equation for second-order kinetics, and the plot of 1 over the concentration of A versus time gave a straight line with a slope that allowed us to deduce a rate constant. Then we examined different types of questions that could be asked of the student. For example, given concentration time data, prove the reaction follows second-order kinetics. Recognizing that the second-order integrated rate law is a straight line if we plot 1 over concentration of A versus time, we data massaged the concentration column to 1 over the concentration of A. If the subsequent plot of 1 over the concentration of A versus time is a straight line, then second-order kinetics for the reaction is observed. Alternatively, and more rapidly, we could examine the first two and last two data points to see if their slopes matched. If they had the same slope, which is the definition of a straight line, then again second-order kinetics is observed or proven. Conversely, this same technique can be used to disprove second-order kinetics. Another important skill is to deduce the rate constant, which is simply the slope for a second-order reaction. The rate constant is often needed for subsequent types of questions. Another skill is to deduce concentration of reactant at some time t. Using the linearized integrated second-order equation, we realize we need the rate constant, the time, and the initial concentration to solve for the concentration of A at some time t. When all of these values are known, the concentration can be deduced at any time t with a little algebra. A student could also be asked for the half-life, the amount of time required to pass for the reactant concentration to be halved. Starting from the previously derived second-order equation and making some substitutions, the half-life equation was easily obtained. Interestingly, each subsequent half-life doubles because of the concentration dependency. To demonstrate this, let's use the following rate constant and an initial concentration of 0.5 molar to calculate the half-life. Now let's calculate the second half-life, which now has half of the initial concentration and we see that the second half-life is double the first. Again, using half the initial concentration for the third half-life, we see the third half-life has doubled again. Another common question is, how much time needs to pass for the reaction to be X percent complete? For example, 86 percent complete. The key here is to recognize that if the reaction is X percent complete, then 100 minus X percent remains. Thus, if the reaction is 86 percent complete, then 14 percent remains. And 14 percent of the initial concentration would be 0 0.07 molar. Using these values within the integrated rate law, with the rate constant, which is simply the slope, will yield the time required to pass for the reaction to be 86% complete.